Trigun is a modern masterpiece. No self-respecting weep can call their shelf comprehensive without this series on it. It perfectly blends action and comedy, with art so gritty you can almost feel the sand in your shoes, and music so iconic that you can't hear this theme without thinking of the humanoid typhoon. But what if I told you it was also the most profound, truthful, and nuanced take on philosophy and anime, as well as the best Superman story, never to star Superman? Trigun initially starts out as a happy-go-lucky anime about the story of Vash the Stampede, also known as the humanoid Typhoon. Due to the unprecedented amount of destruction he's caused, Vash has a ludicrous bounty of 60 billion double dollars on his head. We start to see how this bounty becomes a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy as the series goes on. As mercenaries and people down on their luck all attempt to take down Vash, they end up causing even more destruction in an effort to grab the bounty. It becomes quickly obvious that Vash isn't really a bad guy out to destroy everything around him, but that a false persona of rampaging destruction has been built up about him due to circumstances mostly beyond his control. After the first episode, Vash seems like a hopeless idiot who only gets by on his dumb luck and inaccurate reputation as a vicious gunman. Through the eyes of the insurance girls, Millie and Merrill, who were sent to try and keep his destructive tendencies at a minimum so their company will have to stop paying for all the damages, we see Vash blunder, trip, and scream his way through a myriad of attempts on his life. The comedy works well, and though there are brief flashes where Vash seems to live up to his deadly persona, these moments quickly dissolve into the same old goofy self. Throughout their misadventures, Merrill begins to notice a trend. Despite the mountains of destruction lying around them, no one ever seems to end up dying. Not even the villains who were trying to kill him, and countless other innocents. Eventually, it's revealed that the truth is a little bit more complex than even the initial twist revealed. It's true, Vash isn't the murderous monster he was made out to be, but his personality as a hopeless idiot isn't entirely accurate either. Vash turns out to actually be a superhumanly capable gunman, as well as a staunch pacifist. Heck, Vash doesn't even fire his gun until the fifth episode. His bumbling dumb luck is actually an act, and he's constantly working hard to ensure no one, victim or perpetrator, dies in these shootouts. As time goes on, we see the ramifications this philosophy has on his life. With his superhuman strength, Vash could easily have taken down any number of thugs without getting a scratch on him. But in an effort to keep absolutely everyone safe, his body has been completely destroyed. This is how you do a Superman-style, God Among Men type story. A man in a one-on-one -on -one fight against others of obviously lesser power and moral standing is bound to get boring, and I believe this is where critiques of this style of storytelling have some legitimacy. See, a good man who faces no real opposition or moral struggles doesn't make for a story worth telling. The common wisdom would tell you to solve this, you either need to make your character substantially weaker or make him morally ambiguous. Trigun instead opts to take a far more interesting approach, and gives the story stakes by making our hero a hyper-pacifist. Sure, he can survive any encounter with ease in a fair fight, but can he keep everyone involved, including people actively trying to kill innocents, alive as well? And more importantly, should he even be trying? Leaving these men alive may assuage his guilt for the moment, but what about the trail of destruction they'll leave once they recover? The show will resolve some of these questions later, but not before taking a turn for the worst. In episode 12, Legato Blue Summers takes center stage, and nothing in the show is ever the same again. It's not that Trigun loses all moments of levity from this point on, but they are few and far between. As the true nature of Vash and his past becomes revealed, so does the true nature of the show itself. Legato proves himself to be a real threat, and sends a goon more powerful and deadly than Vash has ever faced before. Even while dropping his goofy persona, Vash cannot manage to save the people of the town from this deadly attack, and dozens are cut down in the crossfire. Completely enraged, Vash takes down the man and nearly kills him out of righteous anger, but the words of a woman named Rim stop him, and his righteous anger comes smack up against his desire to keep her pacifistic will alive. In the end, he chooses to spare the man. If what I've described up to this point has intrigued you, I ask that you stop watching this video and go watch the anime. While I've spoiled about half the show, there is a great amount of the show left to watch that's just best experience firsthand. 
If any of what I've said makes you want to watch the show, just bookmark this video and go do that first. If you have no plans on watching the show and need more convincing, or have watched it already and want a further analysis of its themes, continue onward. From this point on, episodes mostly consist of more and more powerful enemies putting Vash in harder and harder circumstances, testing his staunch pacifism against the confines of reality. These new, more powerful foes show that scratches and scars are no longer the price for his beliefs, but the lives of innocence. His unwillingness to kill his opponents is inadvertently lining the streets with more and more dead. Legato continues to keep pushing and pushing Vash in his adopted principles, forcing Vash through the worst kinds of mental torture, all in an attempt to make him break. And then... He does. Legato finally pushes Vash into a no-win situation. A group of people are being controlled by Legato, forced to attack Millie and Merrill. There are too many to possibly wound enough to save them, and the only way to free their minds is to kill Legato. Vash's opponent offers no resistance. This is what he wanted all along. Legato knows in a one-on-one -on -one fight he will always lose. He doesn't stand a chance against Vash in terms of pure strength. But he truly believes that defeating Vash's moral code means defeating the man himself. Through teary eyes, Vash begs for Legato to avert the collision course they're on. But Legato has a peace about him. His purpose is served. He will be the one to break Vash the Stampede. The girls scream for help. Legato quietly insists. This is how it has to be. All is still until Vash pulls the trigger. With the death of Legado Blue Summers, Merrill and Millie are saved. The citizens are returned to their senses. But the memory and legacy of Rim is truly dead, and so is a part of Vash. The adopted ideals of a beloved mother figure simply couldn't survive the harsh realities of life. Legato succeeded in proving that sometimes you really can't save everyone. And when you come down to it, sometimes the only moral action, the only way to actually save lives, is to kill another. As Legato predicts, this upends Vash's worldview, the thing he based his entire life on, the thing he sacrificed his body for, even innocence that he inadvertently let die by refusing to kill their attackers. All of it was in service to a false idea. Just as Legato planned, Vash has been destroyed down to his very identity. But what Legato didn't plan for was what Vash would do next. Vash doesn't do the whole mopey, my life is a lie thing and just give up on the world. He mourns his loss, he grits his teeth, and then he stands up to face the next threat. Vash has been forced to admit that the world is just too harsh for him to save the people he loves without ever having to take a life. But that doesn't mean his desire to show mercy was wrong. And that doesn't mean the correct answer is to simply take every life unilaterally. Even if the world wouldn't allow Rim's pure ideals to live out in such a perfect way, seeking to save everyone, even the bad guys, isn't wrong at all. It just means that sometimes there is no good choice, only a better and worse one. With the new understanding in mind, Vash steps forward to face his final foe, resolving to seek a non-lethal solution if possible, but no longer bound by the suffocating wishes of his dead mother figure. Vash is now his own man, seeking to do the best he can in whatever situation he finds himself in. Rather than destroying Vash and turning him into a moralist monster, Legato strengthened Vash's resolve, forging him into a man capable of now doing more good than ever before, no longer hindered by the impossible expectations of his past. Trigun teaches a more profound moral message than most other media has ever bothered to tackle and with more nuance and thought than many philosophers bother to put into their work. To show how pure ideals often don't live up to reality, 
but that we must still seek the best in possible is not something that a lot of anime bother teaching. Usually you get the simplified shonen third option, or else the edgy abandonment of all morals in the face of adversity. Trigun instead opts to take an honest look at what it's like to be a good person in a world gone wrong. It touched on how we can fail to do good because we only look in situations in terms of good and bad instead of better or worse. Often life isn't that simple as to allow us the best choice possible or the worst choice possible. Rarely are things that easy. But that doesn't absolve us of choosing the best option possible in every walk of life that we find ourselves. C.S. Lewis writes about this in Mere Christianity when discussing morality. It is hard because so many people cannot be brought to realize that when B is better than C, A may be even better than B. They like thinking in terms of good and bad, not of good, better and best, or bad, worse and worst. We should always strive for the best course possible, but Trigun teaches that the best course possible isn't always the best course imaginable. We have a responsibility to ourselves, to the people around us, and to God to pick ourselves up and keep making the best decision possible. Sticking with simplistic idealism will leave you with a belief system that shatters and fails you. But believing that even in a broken world, it's your job to do the best you can with what you're given. Now that's a profound message that can really change the world for the better. So go do the best you can today. Try and help out your family and loved ones. If the opportunity presents itself, show mercy to your enemies. But remember, that life will often force you to do difficult things because it's just the best option available. You might have to fight for what you believe in. You might even have to hurt others to save innocence. But always, always, always make that an option of last resort. Be kind wherever you can. Show mercy wherever possible. And even if you can't always make the right choice, commit to making the best choice. Do that, and with grace from God, one day we really will live in a world ruled by love and peace! My name is Dalin Malna. God bless. I